Hello and welcome. This is Scott at Mechsoft. This demonstration will give you the basics of the two and a half axis pocketing capability found in Visual Mill 2012. This demonstration part is an electrical box that will be machined out of solid material. As you can see, there are two pockets in it, and I will create three pocketing operations to form these two pockets. To start the machining, I'll choose Visual Mill on the menu bar, then the Machining Operations browser, which comes up on the left of your screen. You'll notice that I've already created a couple preliminary operations to remove the material off the top of the part, exposing the pockets so that we can machine them. To create a pocketing operation, make sure that you're under Program tab, Machining Operations, and Two and a Half Axis. Use the drop down arrow and select Pocketing. This will bring up the Pocketing dialog. Now with this first Pocketing operation, I want to machine this very shallow recess here where the lid of this main pocket will fit. I already have a curve set at the top edge of that wall. So to select it, I pick Select Regions, pick the curve set, right mouse button accepts it, and now the operation will use that as the containment boundary for the pocket. For the tool of this operation, I have predefined two cutters. I'm going to use the 26 millimeter diameter end mill for this operation. On the feeds and speeds, I want to make sure that I load the feeds and speeds from the tool that have been predefined. For a clearance plane, I'm going to have the system check the highest Z of the stock, and I'm going to add 6 millimeters to that height for my rapid traverse moves. For the cut patterns, I want the side stock to be zero because I'm going to finish the walls. I want the cut pattern to be the offset cuts, which is a good general purpose cut pattern that is created by offsetting the walls in parallel passes. I want the cutter to do climb cutting, start near the middle, and work its way outward towards the walls. And each consecutive pass, I want the step over to be calculated as 40% of the tool diameter. Now I need to define the cut levels. When I originally selected the containment region, I selected it at the top of the wall. This parameter reflects that, and I need to make sure that it is set correctly. That means that the depth of cut is interpreted below that top level. I don't know the value of the depth of cut, so I'm going to use a built-in analysis function to allow me to select two corresponding points, one above and one below, which will then calculate the depth of that wall. I can break that total depth up into roughing and finishing, but as I said, because I want to do one pass only, I will leave it all as a single pass and consider it to be the roughing depth. Now let's go to entry exit. I'm going to ramp into the material uh, at 15 degrees directly above one of the segments of the generator path. For retract, I'll just do a simple linear retract at 45 degrees. And now I'm ready to generate the path. And there's the tool path for that lid recess. Now, since most of the parameters will stay the same, Let's immediately create another uh, pocketing operation for the main pocket. Notice that the drive region from the previous operation carries over. So I will remove that, select the new one at the top of the rest of the pocket. Right mouse button accepts that. And there's my new region now to cut the uh, deeper portion of this pocket. I'm going to use the same cutter, so the tool feeds and speeds and the clearance plane will all remain the same. Let's take a look at the cut parameters. So as always, I'll check my stock value. I want to finish the walls completely. I want the um, offset cuts as the cut pattern, climb cut, start on the inside, work your way out, and I want a 40% step over. Now let's go to the cut levels. Now, as before, I selected the cut region at the top of the wall, make sure that this is set correctly, and I will use the analysis function and measure the length of or height of this wall as well. This is the total depth of cut. Now, I can break that into roughing and finishing, and this time I want two millimeters for finishing. That'll be a single level, and that should reduce 
this value by that 2 millimeters. Now this full roughing depth can be broken into sublevels. The parameter here defines how high each one of those or how deep each one of those sublevels should be and I want them to be 12 millimeters. Now I'm ready to generate the path. Now for variety's sake, I'm going to create the pocketing operation for this second pocket by copying an existing operation of the same type. I will select a pocketing operation, Control C copies it, Control V will paste it, then I can select that operation and drag it to the position that I want in the list and drop it there. I'll now rename that operation to be more descriptive. Now I'll edit the operation by double clicking on it. I'll clear the regions list and select two new regions, one at the top of the pocket and one at the top of the island. Right mouse button accepts those. The system evaluates these multiple regions and takes the outermost region as the pocket shape and any smaller regions inside as islands. Now I want to briefly point out a very nice feature here. This island is shorter than the walls of the pocket. That means that the cut pattern will not consider the island until the cutter has descended below the top of the island, as you would expect. I will select the smaller tool. I will update the feeds and speeds to the new tool. Clearance plane will be the same and go to cut parameters. Here I will just check to make sure the key parameters are set as I want them. The stock being zero, offset cuts, climb cutting, inside towards the walls, and 40% step over. Now again, let's define the cut levels for this operation. Uh, the geometry was selected at the top of the pocket. Make sure that that's set right. I've determined that the total depth of the pocket is 38. I want a 2 millimeter final level at the bottom of the floor for finishing. That leaves 36 millimeters as roughing depth, and I'm going to break that up into sub-levels, each of which being 8 millimeters. Because I have an island in this pocket, I'm going to set this clear island tops. So now I'm going to generate the operation, and there it is. I'll simulate this final operation and end the demonstration here. I hope this demonstration will help you machine pockets in your parts using Visual Mill 2012. Thank you.